Welcome again to another edition of Let's Talk Parks. I'm still your host, and I'm still Cody. It's March, and you know what that means. Warmer days and a little more daylight. It also means activities outside. And who has more outdoor programming than Murfreesboro's very own wilderness station? It may be partial, but I'll say no one. I can also say one of the fan favorite programs you'll find at the station is Animal Encounters, and we'll show you why. With spring fast approaching, Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation is rolling out the green carpet with programs to get you familiar with the wilderness around you. And one of those programs is Animal Encounters. Animal Encounters is an opportunity for people to come meet a few of our animals and uh, get to learn more about them. And we like to do that so that uh, they can feel informed about what kind of animals are around them and to inspire them to get to know more about nature and it gives them a chance to interact with it and that really helps connect them with it. It makes me excited because I can tell they're connecting with the animals and getting really excited about it and uh, I'm hoping that they'll remember that throughout their childhood. Each week you can find numerous outdoor opportunities for every age group and interest. And if you're someone who really enjoys hiking, camping, or wildlife, that's what Outdoor Murfreesboro is all about. I see Outdoor Murfreesboro as being a place where people can come and get outside um, and hike and um, do nature and you can come here and hike with us too um, on some programs and we'll come look for birds or amphibians or uh, plants and it gives you a chance to learn more about what's out there. We do activities with kids and we do activities with adults. All of our programs are listed online. Everybody who works here just has so much fun doing this, and so um, if you, anyone comes and hangs out with them for any program, they're gonna feel inspired and have a lot of fun. Even if you're not attending a program or event, the Wilderness Station is still a great place to start on your exploration of the great outdoors. In the Wilderness Station, we have the majority of our animals out um, in the aquarium so people can see them. We have lots of other animals. We have some frogs and amphibians, other amphibians like a salamander. Um, and we have a possum that um, is really cute to bring out. We have lots of snakes. We have the shop in there and there's fun stuff you can buy. And we have a lot of our programs here at the Wilderness Station as well. We'd love for you to come out to the Wilderness Station and hang out with us at any of our programs or on our hikes and come learn with us. The Wilderness Station is located at the rear of Barfield Crescent Park at 401 Volunteer Road. It's the headquarters of Outdoor Murfreesboro and specializes in environmental education and outdoor recreation. To get dates and times of upcoming animal encounters and other programs, check out the Red Connection or give the station a call at 615-217-3017. Animal Encounters meets on Saturdays and it's a free program with no sign up required. And as you can see, it's a big hit with the entire family. So our next story takes us to the St. Clair Street Senior Center where we will focus on my favorite topic, food. Recently, we had a chance to take part in a cooking class set up to help those in attendance prepare meals that are health conscious, fast, and economical. Need a few food ideas for your kitchen? Or maybe you're just used to cooking for a large group, now it's just you. Well, no matter the case, St. Clair has a class you will want to attend. So with the help of the TSU UT Extension Office, the Senior Center hosts Cooking for One or Two. Today we did our Cooking for One or Two, um, and we had a group come in and sit down, and we usually go through a lesson on cooking or budgeting or preparing kind of sim simple, quick, easy to make recipes and I'll make that recipe so everybody can try it and we usually play games and that kind of thing. This is kind of a really informal class. We get a lot of people that um, have opinions or have tried things, have not tried things, maybe have heard of things. So we usually, when it comes to shopping or cooking, um, we try to give them ideas or ways they can um, kind of use what they have on hand, maybe ideas for, to incorporate a lot of variations on recipes as well. Time is a concern for everyone, and recipes like the one prepared today make for a quick and easy meal for one, two, or even a few. 
So we focus on, uh, especially with this class, making short recipes. Um, things that wouldn't take a long time to make, um, like the recipe that we had today. You use a lot of canned beans and just rinse them and throw them in. Um, so we try to do it with like within the time that we have. So in the first first couple minutes. If there is a recipe that requires more time, um, I'll usually have uh, prepared already and then do the first part of the recipe in front of them so they can see it and then bring it out, kind of like a cooking show. People feel free to um, kind of interject or participate and we try to make an environment where people can uh, ask questions or give suggestions or that kind of thing. So uh, every everything is welcomed every kind of perspective, you know, uh, we try to consider and we try to um, give, just give people ideas on what they can do with their food and their budget. The best part of this class is that it's for anyone looking for good tasting, nutritious recipes to keep you eating well and healthy. This is usually just basic stuff. We don't do anything that's too difficult, too complicated. We usually start, I mean, we give people measuring cups and measuring spoons and we demonstrate how to make the recipe. Um, and so usually I break the recipe down and so it's really easy to kind of catch on to and kind of pick up. So uh, we, like I said, we try to make it like inviting for everyone and all levels of cooking and that's when our, maybe our more advanced cooks in the class will interject on what they would do. And, and so we, we invite people's perspectives and things like that. So it's, it's usually really welcome for any kind of skill level or, or anything. So um, we try to keep that in mind as well. The St. Clair Street Senior Center offers classes of all types, not just cooking. So if you want to learn a new skill or just broaden your knowledge base, head down to 325 St. Clair Street and see what's next on their calendar. As part of the Parks and Recreation Department, you can always find a list of programming for the St. Clair Street Senior Center and the Rec Connection. The Rec Connection can be found online at www.murfreesboroparks.com or in paperback at Park and Rec Facilities. So go and pick one up today. Now, while you're going through the Rec Connection, you will see a topic of our next story, liquid yoga. And yes, it's exactly like it sounds. The unique twist on a very popular fitness workout has participants moving through the forms and poses with confidence. The indoor pool at Patterson Park Center isn't just for swimming anymore, and the center has a class to prove it. Certified instructor Jennifer Sanchez has made the pool a perfect place for yoga, and liquid yoga may be the low impact activity you've been looking for. So liquid yoga, it is water yoga. Um, so we do get in the water, however, it's not what you think. So it's not like when we do down dog, I'm not going to put you underwater. But we do down dog. We actually use the side of the pool. So that's, I use the sides of the pools to get you into down dog, to get you into forward fold, to even do some twisting. And then I'll also have you use the side of the pool in case we get into a balance and you might just need it for stability. Uh, we also do also use pool noodles too, and that's just to help with more strength and stability. We'll use them to be like in the water, uh, farther away from the side of the side of the pool, to go into balances, to do more stability uh, into tree. For an example, we'll get ourselves into tree, and we might just use that pool noodle in front of us, and then we can get ourselves into our tree balance, or even just bring in a leg back and maybe bring in ourselves into warrior three. So I've got that different options, whether I use the noodles or I use the sides of the pool. Um, so with liquid yoga, it's really nice for anybody who's, again, just not wanting to do that mat or they want to do something different. They do like mat yoga and they've done mat yoga for many years now, but they want to do something different and they want to get into the pool. They're big pool people. They love the water. They're fish people. They want to do that. So then I have this option for them. So with, again, liquid yoga, it's good, again, for hips, shoulders, um, for pregnant mommies. This is a great class. You get your belly just goes buoyancy. It takes the weight off the back. I've had a few pregnant mamas come in and just be able to move that spine and not have that weight is really nice. Whether in or out of the pool, yoga has many benefits. It helps with arthritis, lowering blood pressure, and improves mental focus. With liquid yoga, it further enhances motion, and the best part is, you don't need to know how to swim. We do have lifeguards on duty, and I do watch you. 
So while you're in the pool, I'm actually outside of the pool and that's how I prefer how to teach. So then I can see you and the position that you're getting yourself into and maybe I can help you with that particular position. But I'm outside of the pool. So I can also be there to watch you and what you're going into. So if you're not a good swimmer and you, but you want to do something different with your yoga practice or just something different in the water, maybe help you get over that fear, your head to stay above. I don't put you underwater. And then this is just another good way to get into the pool and maybe get to know your surroundings a little bit better. Liquid yoga takes place on Mondays in the indoor pool at Patterson Park Center at 5 p.m. This class is for all levels and it's also great for moms-to-be. So if you're interested in making a big splash in liquid yoga, come out to 521 Mercury Boulevard and sign up. Yoga continues to increase in popularity and with certified instructor Jennifer Sanchez offering different versions of this activity, one of her yoga classes will definitely fit into your busy schedule. Our next story takes us to Bradley Academy Museum and Cultural Center where recently they had an open house to continue their community engagement with the use of art, history and more. Past, present, and future. All points of time. All points of focus for Bradley Museum and Cultural Center. Recently, the museum held a weekend event, an open house, and it was all free to the public. It was a day of art and discovery aimed towards African-American history in and around Murfreesboro. Whenever we open our doors for open house, we normally uh, make sure that we have something for all ages. So for the young and the young at heart, a lot of kids uh, really enjoy the classroom. Um, we added a inclusion component where it was sensory, so a lot of hands-on activities. We also brought in our alumni to read to the kids and just to in interact and engage with uh, one another. Volunteers made up of alumni, artists, and even former students are all giving back to make this open house a success. We actually did a call of artists, call for artists, but I actually went to our African American Culture Night at Patterson Park and I actually reunited with one of my former students. We just discussed uh, the techniques, the different techniques that she started um, recreating, um, some of the mediums that she wanted to play with in her younger years, I see how she's grown and elevated. Jade's work is very um, barrier breaking. Um, she is one to um, do that fine line to uh, make sure that what she's trying to get across comes across through her works. Every event we have our patrons to come and want to be a part of our events and so with the past, present and future Black History program we were hosting here, we actually got entrepreneurs, African American entrepreneurs to set up a booth to give the community awareness of what they have to offer. We also had authentic dishes, so we had a group of women who loved to cater in the community. Um, to prepare these dishes. We actually had a group um, organizations and just a team who enjoys learning about the genealogy. So once we gave the tour throughout the facility in the 250 years of experience room, um, right across the hallway in our boardroom, we had the Historical Association with just some volunteers as well who were giving a presentation on our roots. The historic exhibits are more than just designs. They are a significant reminder of a moment in Murfreesboro history, while the artwork on display acknowledges the present and even the future. I feel like art brings life and it, it brings a conversation and it breaks the barriers from people um, letting anything else get in the way besides the art so they can discuss art and how they feel about it. Some of the conversations I've had is they never thought they could put their artwork in an African-American museum. And it's like, we're trying to be, this is a cultural center. So we're trying to bridge that gap and connect people. And I think that we, we bridge that gap with art. They can be men, women, 
boy, girl, um, and all races. Everyone views art as a means of expression, but it is so much more. Art, no matter what the medium, gives viewers a point of engagement. The Bradley Academy Museum is in the heart of Murfreesboro. Um, we are minutes away from downtown, but this is one of our main streets. This facility is one of the oldest facilities in Murfreesboro, and it was the first African-American school in Rutherford County. So this is a key spot to the community of Rutherford County. This is a must-see. You should come to the Bradley Academy Museum just to learn um, about the facility, but not only that, what's going on in our community. Bradley Museum and Cultural Center opens its doors weekly and offers the public a chance to see Murfreesboro in a very unique light. So make it a point to stop by 415 South Academy Street and discover more about the past, present, and future. Bradley Academy Museum and Cultural Center is a true testament to the past, present, and future. What started off as a simple school building continues to bring life and knowledge to Murfreesboro today and hopefully for years to come. And lastly, if you haven't heard, the NPRD list of summer camps has been posted, and now is the time to sign up. The list of activities has something for just about everyone. If you're looking for something that offers more of an adventure for your child, check out Adventure Camps 1 and 2, Zoologist Camp, or even the Explorers Camp. There's something for your sports fan with tennis camp, youth volleyball, and cheer camp. If discovering the past piques your young person's interest, try Pioneer Camp or History through the Arts Camp. And what about the performer in the family? There's the Junior and Senior Broadway Theater. There's even something for the artist with the Fine Art Camp. Registration opens March 2nd, and you can register at Sportscom, Patterson Park, or the NPRD Administration Office. If you can't quite make it out to a physical site, you can register online at www.murfreesboroparks.com, and there you will be able to find a complete list of camps, times, and dates. Now, if you are planning to register online, make sure to contact NPRD before registering and receive your account information. As we close, we want you to know Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation is an award-winning department with services that target athletics, aquatics, cultural arts, fitness, outdoor recreation, and more. If you would like to get involved, be sure to check out the city's website, the Parks and Recreation publication, The Rec Connection, or follow them on social media. I'm Cody, and I'll see you next time.